For years, a small group of researchers have suggested that the Younger Dryas event was caused by a large asteroid some 13,000 years ago. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're talking about some new evidence surrounding a mysterious crater deep beneath the ice of Greenland, what it means, and whether those researchers were right. In 2018, Science.org ran an article that broke down the discovery of a crater beneath Greenland that some researchers believed might have been caused by a 1.5 kilometer wide asteroid some 13,000 years ago, thereby kickstarting the Younger Dryas event. This got quite a few proponents of the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis excited. But after a few more years of study, it turns out that the team was right about the asteroid impact, but not about its place in geological history. Yes, it seems as if this crater is much, much older than they originally thought. Hiawatha Glacier is located in northwest Greenland, and the crater in question is 31 kilometers wide and rests beneath a kilometer of ice. At the time of the impact, any bipedal ape descendant or animal within 500 kilometers would have had good reason to soil their loincloths, as they would have been treated to the apocalyptic sight of a searing white fireball four times the size of the sun blazing across the sky. But according to new findings by laboratories in Denmark and Sweden, this impact crater is more than likely 58 million years old. That's just a few million years after the devastating impact that ushered in the end of the dinosaurs. So no one with loincloths and no bipedal ape descendants would have been around to witness the impact. But that impact would have carried a destructive force of 700 one megaton nuclear bombs. And if there were any animals around to witness it, they would have been able to see it from hundreds of kilometers away. That impact would have also generated hurricane force winds as well as a massive shockwave and thunderclap. The impact would have also caused forest fires to erupt all over the northern hemisphere. So I know what you're thinking, but Eric, how do we know this figure is right? Let's get into that right now. Amazingly, researchers at the Natural History Museum of Denmark and the Swedish Museum of Natural History worked independently from each other, yet somehow arrived at the same result. While researchers in Denmark sampled sand from Hiawatha Crater, researchers in Sweden sampled rocks from it instead. Denmark experimented on the sand samples by heating them. This produced argon gas that the team was able to date back to the time of the impact. Sweden, however, dated the uranium fingerprint in the zircon of the rocks they sampled to arrive at the same time period. 58 million years. Michael Story, one of the scientists from the Denmark side of the equation, had this to say about the conclusion. Dating the crater has been a particularly tough nut to crack, so it's very satisfying that two laboratories in Denmark and Sweden, using different dating methods, arrived at the same conclusion. As such, I'm convinced that we've determined the crater's actual age, which is much older than many people once thought. At the time of impact, it's thought that Greenland was blanketed in a temperate forest, and it's likely that this impact would have leveled quite a bit of that. But it's uncertain how this would have impacted the Earth's climate. It's currently thought that the effects of the KPG impact lasted for around 60,000 years. But that is because the asteroid that caused that devastation was 10 to 15 kilometers in diameter, way larger than the Hiawatha asteroid. Side note, does anyone remember when science documentaries thought that the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was around a mile in diameter? Yeah. Nostalgia. But as science getters, you know that size is not everything. Impactor speed and angle of impact are extremely important, and right now we don't have enough data to determine an estimate for those variables. Further research will be important to understanding how this impact affected Earth's climate, and I'd say that understanding how impacts of this size might affect us today will be extremely important. While asteroids around the size of the Cretaceous Paleogene impact don't happen all that often, estimated to occur once every 275 to 730 million years, those around the size of the Hiawatha asteroid happen once every 600,000 years, which is much more frequent. So it'll be really interesting to see how the data around this crater develops. That's all I've got for you today, so if you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and join our Discord community and start chatting with other science nerds like you. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.